Raise it up all the way, Lenny. Mmm, coffee. Smells good. What I'm doing is I've been mixing one pack of regular with two packs of the flavored instant oat. Plus sugar. So meal or no meal out here. It is day seven. And I decided to change my clothes. That was my modeling strut. I learned it from the Budnik brothers. Anyways, um, that's not my seat. That would have been really shitty. Um, I just camped at this big mountain runoff gulch. Really beautiful. And even though I got to camp late, got to bed around 10, 10.30, which isn't bad. Out of the tent at seven, so got a solid eight hour sleep. Okay, seven and a half hours sleep. And I'm sort of just plotting what my best route would be to climb Mount Nitro. I think I'm gonna veer off this gulch and head up another runoff valley that's not too treed. The other way I could go is up this gulch right to the peak, but it's really, really steep. So I think I'm gonna do this, get up onto the ridge line, walk along the ridge line a bit. As you can see, there's a lot of forest fire smoke that blew in. You know, I was thinking from up there, I could probably see over to the Blackstone River, which is the next river in this watershed to my west, but it's looking like that's probably not gonna be possible. It's gonna be a six to eight hour round trip to climb up there, which means I will be camping here again. So I'm gonna leave my tent set up, all my stuff ready. That way I'll have shelter, even if anything goes wrong and I get back late. Um, I'm going to do a little pre-blister prep. When it comes to blisters, probably the best thing you can do is prevention beforehand. So I'm just slapping some duct tape right on the old tootsies. Around the back of the heel, along the base of the foot, like that. Doing some prepping. I'm going to need my first aid kit, my survival kit hat, sunglasses, lunch, and water. I'll bring some water tabs too. And then of course I'm gonna take my GPS with maps in it, my in-reach messaging device. I'm gonna pack that up quick and hit the trail. And there is no trail. This is just me following creek valleys and mountain passes and ridges. So it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. Compass. And I also have a bear banger, bear spray here on my belt. In the event that I should have to spend the night out there, uh, between the rain gear, the sweater, and the Mylar blanket in my survival kit. I probably have enough that I could survive the night if I got lost or injured out there and couldn't travel home tonight. And of course, stuff to make a fire and all that too. And I'm off. Setting off at a decent pace. Uh, a lot of the smoke's cleared up. However, it's gotten a lot hotter, so maybe I should have left early, but uh, the steep part is uh, what's well, gonna take a lot, a lot of energy. The air gets thinner the higher you get as well. So, got my work cut out for me. That is where I'm going. We got some blueberries, ladies and germs. That's a nice sound. It appears that the creek is exposed here, running above the rocks. On a hot day like this, I think I'm going to take the opportunity, even though I'm not far into the trek, I'm gonna climb down there, drink, one of my water bottles and uh, refill out of that creek. I probably won't even tab it. I brought water tabs in case water's questionable, but I don't think this water's questionable. There's no beaver dams or anything like that, so it's just essentially snow runoff. <sighs> oh man, that's so good so cold
Looks like someone put a marker there. I've made my way up this stream and it looks like maybe that's the way to go. That's steeper than I'd anticipated, but doable. This rock doesn't even look like a marker. It just looks like it's naturally like that. I think I'm gonna go for it. Up here, up there, to there, up, and then across. <sighs> looks like I really have my work cut out for me here, but uh, I think I can do it. I think I'm gonna go for it. Once I get up there, it'll be pretty easy going and then down. It'll be tough on the knees and that, but uh, it's not as physically arduous on the cardio side. You can see though, I've come up quite a ways. I've come out here and gone around the bend, well above the river now. Definitely uh, a little hazy from the fire smoke. different route than I had uh, plotted and cutting up a lot sooner as opposed to walking up the valley more which means I'll have more of a vertical climb but shorter of a distance to walk along the ridge when I get up there so it's uh, not easy going the scree rock stuff is very challenging to walk in That's some high quality H2O. What movie's that from? This is just made with lard. I can already feel that energy from the pemmican just hitting me. Man, that sun is hot. I will eat one more thing of pemmican. I'm doing it. Definitely a false summit there though. Once I crest that, it's gonna keep going up. Looks like a little more smoke is blowing in, but uh, view still should be epic from up there. Starting to catch up to me right about now. I can feel that uh, the air has gotten thinner, but it's also cooled down a bit, which is nice. Now I have the hard part right in front of me. Uh, here is a straight up piece of lava rock. A long, long time ago, there was a volcano sitting in the middle of the bright deep blue sea. And from his lava cave, the sound of laughter that he made. Very close to here, there was a shallow sea. That sea gave way over many billions of years to the Mackenzie Mountains. You can find fossils at the tops of the Mackenzie Mountains, fossils of uh, sea creatures, which is wild. And to think that at one time, obviously there was a volcano spewing out around here. I'm not uh, gonna be going up this runoff gulch anymore. I'm gonna veer off and get climb up a steeper part, hopefully get to a less steeper part that'll bring me up to the main ridge of Mount Nitro. It's tough going, but uh, I'm doing it, you know? I'm doing it. All right, this is gonna be a scramble on all fours. You know, if I, you gotta be careful, because if I fall and I pick up speed, it could be SOL pretty quick. This 
is way too steep. I think it might be dangerous. So I should fall and pick up any speed. I'm gonna keep going for it though. There's some trees up here. If I can get to the trees, I should be okay. I might actually just cut right across right there and get on some uh, solid ground. This is crazy. Stepping in this stuff just slides right out from under you. Yikes. That's better. I made it out of that sketchy scree into some solid ground, but it's still gonna be like a scramble on all fours type situation here. This is gonna be by far the hardest part here. Slow and steady wins the race here. I could barely even put down my backpack for fear that it's gonna roll all the way back down to the Hart River. It looks like a bunch of smoke's blowing in, kind of killing the view, but still really cool. Well, I just stumbled across something that you're way up here on the ridge that looked kind of like an old cache. Uh, it could just be the way the rock scree fell on top of each other. So I pulled a couple of rocks out. It felt like what seemed like a breeze coming from in the hole. So I dug down a bit and just found a bunch of interesting rocks, but maybe it's just the cool air, but it'd be cool if there's a, a cave or something hidden under here. I mean, it makes me wonder. I don't think this is a place people would come Search for gold, typically they'd stick to the creek beds and stuff like that. Definitely not the first to have climbed this mountain. I'm almost up this patch of green here. Then I'm back onto the big chunks of rock scramble. Not looking forward to it, but I'm getting there. This is uh, part of the trek where it starts to feel a little daunting. Just gotta tell myself, hey, first of all, it never gets dark here got all day, pace myself, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and I'll get there and don't get discouraged. It's nice once in a while to look back. There's my tent. And see where you've come from when you start to get discouraged. Oh, I got so much further to make it. Well, look back and hey, I've already made it a good distance. Drank my one liter of water though. I have one more left. I found what looks like a doll sheep trail or a mountain goat trail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, I'm thinking I'm just gonna follow it to what looks like a peak, or I don't know if it's technically the summit, but I'm gonna follow along to that peak where I think I'm gonna get an awesome view. Pretty cool to be all the way up here and see pretty distinct game trail, I like it. poop up here. It's more like rabbit poop though. High up for a rabbit. I think trusting the mountain sheep trail is the way to go because it just brought me to this ridge so much easier than if I'd just gone straight up there and down. wonderful cool breeze was just completely blocked by the mountain on my way up 
and I literally started thinking I was gonna get heat stroke didn't have enough water it was so steep it was pretty dangerous to be honest with you at times and now I'm just sitting in a little saddle on this epic ridge line next ridge line I can see the Blackstone River which is another river the Peel watershed and here on this mountain face I can see crazy they must be mountain goat trails just working their way along against some really steep topography pretty spectacular despite the forest fire smoke oh and I can't tell you how nice this breeze is man I needed that I'm gonna continue walking along this till I can find a way to get back down following this sheep trail and uh, no surprise a couple doll sheep right over that hump pretty amazing well I came down the saddle and I see some treetops just popping up there um, which is probably about as high as you're gonna see any trees get because this is all alpine tundra here and I think this indicates probably a good route to go back my camp is way over there so if i go straight down and then kind of bushwhack through there about a click and a half or so i'll be back at camp i don't really want to go down something that's as steep as what i came up man i'm gonna miss this nice breeze and this awesome ridge line this is so cool up here i might just take one moment to just sit and take it in I'm glad that I decided to make this track yeah, easy going once you're up here. Tough to get here, but nice when you're up here. Pretty cool. Well, I have begun my descent. As soon as I crest over, onto the Heart River side of the ridge, the wind stops, but luckily it's not as hot as it was. But really the Heart River and the Blackstone River are pretty close here. It's just that they're really far because you literally have to climb this mountain and then down into a valley and then up another mountain to get from one to the other. So it wouldn't be a good place to try to portage from one to the other, that's for sure. Hopefully this this turns out to be good. I've, I've had issues coming down off mountains before where you think you know the way down and you, you start going down and then you hit a cliff. You walk along the cliff and then you run out of land. You have to go way back up, walk along again, think you have a passage down again, find out you don't. Literally get stuck on the mountain for hours as it's getting dark. It can be kind of stressful. But I think just looking at my map that uh, this is going to work also just the fact that there's trees here i'm not walking that scree it would be great if i could avoid that scree for sure but yeah i know it's tiring but still more people get injured going down than up in fact in hardcore mountain climbing more people die knock on wood going down than do coming up because if you fall forward well things are interesting Well, so far so good. This was actually the route that I was considering coming up and back down or go walk along the ridge and come down. Yeah, it might actually have been a good route up because the way I took up sucked. But no scree, not yet anyways. This could be a patch of forest and then we'll see. Still way up. I'll make it slow and steady, but looks like there's a super steep stretch to come. And if it gets too steep, I might have to bushwhack along the side of the hill for a bit to get somewhere where it's a little better i don't know i'll feel better once i'm down further my my biggest concern right now is the lack of water that i have there's going to be no water on this route down at all and uh i'm already super thirsty should be okay but it just might be like completely parched by the end of it it's coming down part here and i can see footprints 
in the grass where the grass is folded over. Looks like a good chance it could be a bear, so just gonna make some noise. Hey bear! Hey bear! Beat it! One of the issues with uh, <clears throat> not having enough water is it causes horrible cramps. The underside of your thighs and your calves. Any chance you're cramping out there, people think it's from overexhaustion, but 90% of the time it's from dehydration. Looks like I haven't chosen the best route here after all as well. I probably should have taken another uh, valley coming off the mountain this way because it looks like here I'm going to have to go down and then way back up again and then I'll be about a kilometer and a half on flat land from camp even at that point so <clears throat> but I haven't been dealing with like a ton of scree and maybe there'll be a creek down there but I don't know how the hell this happened looked like the best way to go but I guess important thing is I get down off the mountain and I'll get back to camp eventually before I die of the dehydration just looking at that water is making me thirsty these blueberries are definitely helping to hydrate me. You can see now the river, my campsite's right about there. So I'm getting there. It's looking like the leisurely flat part is uh, is coming to an end. And there is the Heart River. Well, I think it's safe to say I made it and I'm definitely not gonna die of dehydration. My campsite is just over that way, probably 100, 200 meters away. Uh, so I'm more or less gonna follow the river back to the site, but should be there in two minutes. So I think it's safe to say I did it. Climbed Mount Nitro, walked along the ridge at the top, found my way back down to camp. Awesome, awesome day. Feels good to have accomplished something hard like that. There's times when I thought, man, this is this is dangerous or is it worth it? And in the end, absolutely it was. So great day. Um, don't have to break camp today, staying at my campsite. So I'm gonna go back, drink a lot of water and get dinner going. Back at camp. A little more beat than when I left, but satisfied. Well, right as my water was boiled and I was about to take the pot off the fire, the stick it was on broke and it dumped off and spilled. When at first we don't succeed, we try, try again. At least it didn't put the whole fire out. That's all, you know, could have been worse. I lugged this uh, big ass can of tomato sauce out here. So the rest I have are just the packaged ones. Alfredo and stuff like that. It's like a powder. And you can just leave some water in there and then dump it in. Well, that's Dunsky. Couple hunks of uh, ash in there. Good for the digestive system. All of it. That is a lot of food. 
Time for a feast. Mm. Nailed it on the pasta. It almost seems surreal looking at it now that I just climbed that today. Pretty awesome. It's a ways up. Today was a pretty big day. I took the time to uh, explore some of the surrounding country of the Hart River. This country was traveled through largely by the waterways, but people also traveled overland. There's various foot trails that connect one river to another. It wasn't only traveled on by water. People got off of the waterways. They traveled into the mountains to hunt to you know explore and that's the indigenous people who are here far before so pretty cool to imagine not just kind of passing by on a trip but actually having this be your permanent way of life looking forward to getting back on the water tomorrow getting back into some more fishing and uh, seeing what the river has in store um, tomorrow might be the day where i'm going to be hitting up an intense whitewater canyon with raging class two and three rapids after today i have five days left on the heart river and also the peel to make it to my float plane pickup location at canyon creek i think at this rate I'm gonna be okay as long as I keep making the distance I have to make, it's doable. It's a bit of a different trip than my Bonnet Plume or Hess River trip where you're really consumed with rapids, but the river is still very spirited as you saw with the sweepers and going through the tight bends and the braided current and every river is a little bit different and um, that's why you gotta paddle them all. Well, beautiful campsite here, perched up on, um, what the hell am I on? I don't know. But uh, perched up high above the river here. Foggy and, and uh, hazy, but also forest fire smoke all mixed together are giving us this really cool, enchanting look this morning. And um, another great place to have a cup of coffee, that's for sure. To the naked eye, this doesn't really look like much, but to me, this looks like a large old structure. And I mean very old, considering that that tree right there is probably 80 to 100 years old. And it's growing in what is now the middle of this structure. So that's a right angle there. And then there's another one on that side and it goes for almost 30 feet in this direction. So a very large rectangle here. A fire came through here, maybe burnt whatever re remnants of the cabin were left whenever that tree burnt. Judging by the fact on how decayed this is and that you can barely notice it, you know, we're talking about something that could be a couple hundred years old, um, if not more even. Just judging the size of these trees growing out of it, here and here those are growing in what would have been the middle of the structure anyways pretty interesting uh, beautiful place to build a cabin or to spend large portions of the time i know that there's definitely dull sheep trails in the mountains here which uh, the guichin hunted um, and still do hunt and uh, probably caribou in the area as well um, it's an area where uh, it's going to be very hard if you're traveling up river to get through that canyon at certain water levels So it might be an area where a staging area um, Or just a good spot to call home I think even just getting a tiny glimpse into what their lives were like kind of puts your mind back in time to when things were a little bit different to when people live differently and uh, I Don't know just really enriches the whole experience out here 
Well, it's looking like I won't get to them today, but I do have some intense rapids. Class 3 Canyon that uh, ever has a place in the back of my mind is approaching. And I'm probably going to want the spray deck for that, so I don't need it today, but it's a half decent spot to put it on, and I might as well just slap it on, get it over with. Okay, I got one side lashed down. Now I do the same thing on the other side. All right, there we go. Spray deck on and solar panel re-rigged up. So I'm getting on the river probably about 11.30, not ideal, but I don't have a super far to make it today, so I should be okay. Anyways, here we go. Looks like the river got murkier overnight. There was some thunder and a little bit of drizzle last night, so my guess is it must have uh, rained up river and those tributaries got full of silt, which washed in here, but it's almost a brown color right now. Well, yesterday it was uh, a blue. There's a ledge here. Bald eagle perched on top of this pillar. Look. The bald eagle is the gatekeeper of this rapid. Must have a nest up there. I'm going to call this bald eagle rapids. Hi, Eagle! It's looking right at me. You can probably pick out the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Show me your dick! Paddling on for a bit. And I get a funny feeling. I literally could just had that feeling that something was staring at me. I look back and the Eagle is clearly still staring at me. Tricky paddling moments of the trip, but uh, some of the biggest standing waves yet. place to eddy out. This is a, a side slaw. I see a beaver dam up there though, but it's a, a side slaw that a tributary creek enters and uh, beavers are have it dammed up pretty substantially. I was going to jump out and take a couple casts here, see if we can get any fish. The tributary that comes in just above that beaver dam, I guess, isn't bringing enough clear water in. So uh, maybe it's just, um, you know, too uh too cloudy the water's not clear enough here for there to be fish and it seems like after the rain we got last night and just all the tributaries bringing in loads of silt with them that we don't have a clear water river anymore uh, so it's going to be trickier to catch fish i'm going to have to focus more on the clear water tributaries and, and you know obviously try any back eddies and stuff but uh they could just not be biting because it still looks like a decent spot i don't know but uh, we'll see There's that beaver dam, but uh, yeah, just a little trickle coming through it. Looks like clear water, but not clear enough. Great. 
sailing. Yes. Just in this little side slot. A mountain runoff creek. This river is just like surreal. It's so awesome. Well, there's been a few uh, rapids today, which are just basically wave trains, but uh, pretty smooth sailing for this last little part. Scenery's not quite as good as when I was in those canyons, but still amazing. Yeah, I think I, I don't think I'm gonna push on and try to make it more than 25K today. Um, so basically I'm gonna try to make it about another 7K and look for a spot to camp, hopefully somewhere as usual with decent fishing. But uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful day on the water. It'd be nice if I'd seen a little bit of wildlife, but uh, can't complain. Bald Eagle. tributary could be some fish in this tributary here not exactly rolling in with any momentum though sometimes when they come in fast they make a bit of an eddy but it's clear dinner's about to be caught ladies and germs there is the tributary Yes, okay, so far first cast was a nice grayling.
Oh, there's that bald eagle. I have its fishing hole. Maybe it's fished it out. Got one here. There she is. Yes. I gotta say, this has got to be the best fishing hole of the whole trip yet. Maybe not as big average size as some of them upriver, but I just put away the fly rod and uh, I said, okay, I'll take a couple casts with this spinning rod before I push off. And I've just been here catching and releasing fish after fish, literally on almost every cast. Watch this, just quick cast out, boom, fish. And I'm, I'm fishing with only two hooks that are barbless on this as well. Look, just endless amount of fish. That's a smaller one. I'm gonna push on, but it's almost seven. So between putting the spray deck on, but I'll have done my 25K today. Look at that, another one. Every cast, I'm telling you guys, this is magical. This is a good one too. Look at that chunker. Noticeably larger. I've already kept three, so that's probably enough for me to eat. <sighs> Goodbye, enchanted fishing hole. I love you. into those boils. So sketchy, one of the most unpredictable things. So they spun me around and well next thing you know I'm paddling the rapid backwards. Scariest uh, part of the trip yet. <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be the spot. Looks a little rocky, a little lumpy, but uh, I might have to just bust out my inflatable ground pad and deal with it. Other than that, looks good. Looks like there's some wood here. Not so windy, beautiful surroundings. I'll take it. I'll take it, gosh darn it. some of the bigger boulders but I gotta stop I can't keep pushing on it's so late ah what a nice evening man compared to uh, the weather is getting last year on the bonnet plume this is like I had frost in July I mean I didn't mind I was prepared for it it's the northern Yukon but there was cold rain never really got too warm I was paddling in a sweater <coughs> complete opposite this time This little metallic color thing, which is key for that to slip on, is gone. So I don't know if it came loose and it slid down inside one of the uh, poles. I, I looked in there, I can't see it. I don't know how it would have disappeared. So I splinted it with some saplings.
Dizzy, I'm dizzy. Always plenty of uh, driftwood on these gravel bars. I just had to go into the bushes over there find some that was kind of washed up against the bushes and drift piles from higher water times and uh, just at the foot of this beautiful mountain after coming through that canyon today really really awesome uh, hitting that epic fishing hole the bald eagle staring at me and uh, that little that little kind of cove I went into where I saw those bald eagle prints and the beaver dam and just of course the scenery all around made it a pretty special day Fresh fish. Nothing like it, I'm telling you. It is day nine of my trip. I have four days left counting today. Who knows what today has in store? Hopefully, I get into some epic fishing. Time to fire up the eyebrow remover. Well, there is my attempted split fix. I put two pieces of sapling on either side of the uh, broken joint. The joint was missing this little metallic colored piece here. I don't know how that disappeared. Maybe it got pushed down inside. So I had to splint it with two pieces of twigs, basically. I used green twigs and duct tape. Seem to work, but it's definitely questionable. I only have four days left on this trip, including today, so hopefully it makes it three more nights. coffee be too weak or too strong somewhere in the middle or just right I missed um, my kids a lot um, I have like a couple of videos on my phone that I've watched a bunch of times because I brought my phone I've been using it as an alarm clock clearly not very effectively because I usually sleep in about a half an hour after my alarm rings but and so I have videos of Huddy playing the ukulele and of Wesley laughing while listening to music and like a bunch of other things too you know we get so caught up in our lives our day-to-day -day, uh, lives the busyness of of uh, having a family of our jobs and 
managing a household that we sometimes forget to just stop and realize how like amazing and special our lives are you know and I guess just being away from the family and missing them and like just watching a couple of these videos of the kids too it just makes me want to go home and slow down for a little bit and enjoy my property spend time with the kids swimming and barbecuing and tending to the gardens and stuff like that as we build things and we build like our lives that we always kind of want more and you need to you need to how am I gonna save for retirement you know you need to keep working and all that but I think it's important to sometimes just slow down and just like reflect on what you do have so I'm at kilometer 160 so that means I have a hundred kilometers to go in four days um, and if I if I have a, a long portage around that canyon that might be pretty challenging but if I don't I should be okay let me see okay here's the rapids so yeah the rapids are, are it's not just that the rapids are uh, class 3 it's that they're super long so I doubt it'll be a raging class three the whole way, but it's almost a kilometer of class two, three rapids. Three rapids over a kilometer and a half, and then uh, some more on top of that. So it's looking like it won't be today, but it'll be tomorrow, which will be an intense whitewater day. So I still don't see any fires by Mount Bunos. I got word that they're north of Mount Bunos, which is kind of the direction I'm traveling. Um, hard to really pinpoint where they are. But it doesn't look like I'm in any immediate danger, that's for sure. There, it's just like an abyss of smoke. In general, across Canada, the worst uh, wildfire year in Canadian history. Just north of that mountain, there are some fires. You can see the visibility, you can barely even see the mountains. Um, in the north, the taiga forests or the northern boreal here in the subarctic, fires are common. They have been getting more frequent in recent years, but they are natural, actually. The biodiversity of the northern boreal forest is actually largely fire-induced, and uh, some biologists even call it pyrodiversity. So it, it does play a role. It is an important part um, in the cycle. But either way, there's forest fires around here, and I'm not sure how concerned I should be about them or how far really they are away from the Hart River, um, they'd be on that bank. So, you know, I, I can't imagine it would burn incredibly quickly during the time I pass through here, but I'm sort of on the fence, you know, do I do a hike? If I do a hike, I can't even see anything anyways, but I'm hiking up to see caves, not necessarily the view. Or do I just kind of get past this whole area where the fires are and get to where for sure I'll be safe? I don't know. I'll have to make up my mind soon though. You know, it's very challenging to see the caves, um, you know, because I want to see them before I start climbing so I know where the heck I'm going. Some of those caves high up in the mountains, um, you know, Doll Sheep has been using them for thousands of years and you can find preserved fossilized bones and skeletons and stuff um, just lying there even. Other cool things like that see a cave there but that looks like a death clamber to get up there even for a sheep
shit. Looks like I could have gotten up that way after all. Oh man, I couldn't see until I was right there. All right, we'll stick with the new plan. Checking it out from the other side. Quite an impressive rock here. Expect to see gargoyle staring down at me. Well, from here I don't really see any caves from this side, but I see some really cool, like, uh, standing sort of spires up there. This looks epic, so I think I'm gonna climb up, see how high I can get up to the ridge. I might not be able to get all the way up because it's near vertical, but I can definitely get up a good ways. So I think I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> looks pretty exciting, actually. Well, I just uh, tossed my Nalgene bottles out of the boat to take on my hike and something bad happened. Look at this. Oh no. Well, looks like I'll have one liter of water for this trek. These things are supposed to be unbreakable. Camp Wobbin. Now come to think of it, Tori and I found this on a portage trail about six or seven years ago and maybe it had sat out all winter and weekend. Oh well, it happens when you party. You have to be extra careful with that one. Well, I am on my way. I'm trying to figure out which is the best way to start going up. I see two little caves over there. I think I might head over to this stretch of green so I'm not gonna be clambering up scree. Those pillars, now that I'm a little closer, look like they're at the top of a sheer cliff. Uh, maybe Alex Honnell could bang that off, but it uh, doesn't look like it's in the cards for old Jim today, so we'll go up this way. Pretty cool. I don't know if I'll find any caves, but I'll definitely get a good view. That way there with the grass looks a little more gradual. I think I'm just gonna go right up, right up this way. A little bit of bushwhacking is required. Kind of cool in here actually. Hey bear! Doesn't hurt to make a little noise when you're bushwhacking. Hey bear! Just so you don't come up on a grizzly and surprise it. That's what they say to do. That's why some people carry bells. That looks steep. I don't remember looking this steep from back at the river. Just making my way up here slowly but surely. And I glance up quick and it looked like something was staring at me, ducked away behind the rock, something white. So I think it was a, either a doll sheep or a mountain goat. Probably a doll sheep, kind of cool. Or maybe it was a Yeti. There's my canoe. They've made it quite a ways up. Just taking a break because uh, this is exhausting. I'm probably about halfway. I don't know what I'll do when I'll get up there. I'll see if I can kind of walk side hill a little and hit a ridge and maybe walk along this ridge a bit or I might just enjoy the view and come back down. I still have 20 clicks to make it today and uh, probably wouldn't hurt to get out of this forest fire area too. So I might do that. We'll see what it's like. If it doesn't take too much effort to get up on the ridge, then I'll probably do it. Check 
in with the canoe. Oh, it's still there. Made it up uh, this long, sharp scree scramble. Really second guessing whether I want to go down that way. But look, I'm almost where I'm headed for. I decided to keep climbing. I'm surprised to find what looks like bear poop up here and maybe a mom and cub. It's old. But they both have like flecks of bone in them. Which means, yeah, I think it's a mom and cub bear. It looks like I could get back up the ridge line there and uh, get a view over the other side of this mountain to where I first stopped my canoe and considered climbing. Uh, I haven't seen any caves here, which is, you know, whatever, but it just, it's still super cool. Like I'm just way up here amongst these crazy rock formations. There's crevices in the rock. There's just freestanding kind of spires basically. A little triangles like of a it's basically like a sawtooth across the top there across that ridge it's super cool and the views are just amazing it's it's hard to believe my canoe is way down there i'm actually starting to dread the hike back down and there is my canoe this is so awesome when i considered turning back it was at that point that it was like just starting to get good and I'm able to just sort of walk along on one side of the ridge here and just experience all these cool rock formations. It's so awesome. Look at that, that's, that's a true spire there. It's already six o'clock. Going down the same way I came up is kind of, uh, it's the devil I know, you know what I mean? Uh, but from here, going down the little valley just to my right, looks like not as steep, but more scree. But yeah, some of that loose scree, man, going down is gonna be, and it was sharp too. Going down is gonna be pretty interesting albeit sort of dangerous so I don't know I'll make the final decision when I get a little closer I think I might try the new route old way or new way I think I'm gonna go new way why the hell not if I fell back I could probably cut my hands I feel like I haven't come down very far at all. Well, this way is proving to be more dangerous. As you can see from here, this near cliff. What do you think it'll take me, an hour? An hour would be pretty good. It took me an hour and a half to get up here. Thank <laughs> you. 
She's a good girl, loves her mama, love Jesus, and America too. She's a good girl, crazy about Elvis, loves horses, and a boyfriend too. But I'm a bad boy, cause I don't even miss her. I'm a bad boy, for breaking her heart. But I'm free falling now, I'm free falling, scree falling, oh my loving, scree falling. Watching all this scree fall made me think of the song Free Falling by the late great Tom Petty. Anyways, uh, I'll tell you what, partially falling down the mountain is making things go a lot faster. I'm just basically like sliding down with the scree. Just gonna keep giving her and I'll be back down at the boat pretty soon. Right now the boat is about half the size of my pinky finger now from here. Uh, there's a fossil of some sort. Okay, this is much better. Made it back onto some uh, dirt and vegetation. It's just far less sketchy. Well, I did it. I made it down through some really steep, sketchy scree. Picked up some uh, nice, soft, earth with uh, vegetation grasses and stuff in it followed that down and now i'm back in the bush so i just gotta follow this little animal trail here and uh, do a bit of bushwhacking and i'll be back at the canoe in no time awesome awesome little hike i'm glad i did it and there it is folks the canoe and that's what i just climbed pretty good okay so we are done Epic little trek in the books and back on the river. And uh, it's five o'clock already. So I don't think I'm going to uh, try to push really far today, but I'm gonna try to bang off like 10 minutes. Got a rapid here. Looks fairly intense. It's almost like a ledge. sang and the wildflowers bloom and in sunshine the waters are sleeping but the broken-hearted cans thou shall second spring again 
Oh, the wakeful will cease for the greeting. Oh, you tack the high road, and I'll tack the low road, and I'll be in Scotland before you. For me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Another one of these things is broken. You gotta be fucking kidding. It is day 10 and um, considering my pickup is first thing in the morning on day 12, that means I need to make it all the way to my pickup location at Canyon Creek on the Peel River in two days. So I have two big paddling days in front of me. Very, very smoky, thick smell of smoke in the air and chilly morning by far the coldest it's been on this trip yet so yeah today probably about less than 10 kilometers from now i'll be faced with some uh, violent whitewater rapids uh, followed by several more hopefully somewhat easier ones and i'm gonna have to bang off 40k however you look at it even if i have to paddle to midnight and sleep for four hours and get up and do it again so hopefully it's not that intense anyways here we go Here's my ground pad, got a little too close. Like, wow, that's a lot of steam today. I guess because it's colder or something. And then it's like, oh, it's smoke from my foam ground pad burning. Brown sugar morning. You bet your ass. We live in fallen morning ground. We are the least. We are the least in more than sound. We have no home. You're not alone. You're welcome. Perfect. Mm. Nailed the eyeballing at coffee. Water doesn't start for about 12k so I'm gonna tuck this away but I'm definitely gonna be using this white water paddle today I'm using some uh, power of positive thought here to think that this uh, Canyon Rapids gonna be runnable the river's pretty wide there right so there might be like a sneak route where I can bypass some of the huge waves and stuff like that but I think that's it ready to hit the water Okay. 
Okay, on the water, day 10. I got my work cut out for me, baby. looking up there I looked up and I saw a flash of white disappearing behind two rocks so I saw pretty sure I just saw about this much of a dull sheep they're not easy to see This isn't marked on my map, but looks like it's a pretty good rapid here. So I'm gonna run it. I don't have time to bust out my white water paddle, really. Just bedrock underneath me. Smooth bedrock. Well, if this is unmarked, that makes me think the one I'm coming up to going to be fairly substantial. This is like a class one. Oh. Have to make a little move there. A curling pool basically. Waterfall trickling down there. Wow. I just did a shot of me paddling around this big bend in the river that just completely flanked with a mountain and cliffs and light brown to khaki to gray to black rock and a waterfall stream trickling in through a tight valley cut through the middle of the mountain. I don't know what it is, the lighting, the smell of the air, the crispness of the air, the color of the water. I don't know what it is, but it just, it's just so humbling. The size of the mountain, the little bit of fear I felt coming up, hearing that the rapid, wondering if there's a rapid. And it just like is somehow incredibly, connecting and spiritual moment here for me right now like people ask me why i do these things and for moments of like this and from the bottom of my heart the best way i can explain it is that you feel the presence of a greater force than yourself i don't know what it is about this spot there's a hundred spots on this river that are super special but for some reason this spot is just really speaking to me right now it's literally like humbling and like literally emotional i guess is how i could describe the the feeling that you get sometimes when you're in places like this and one good thing about doing them solo is that you kind of are forced to sort of connect with that in a way that you might not be when you're involved in the conversations and, and connectedness of a group although personally I, I do like probably traveling with a group better but uh yeah definitely you get these moments of introspection when you just are paddling on miles of beautiful river and you sort of automatically get into like a meditative state almost and allows you to connect with thoughts that don't seem to come from your own mind. This looks like an epic fishing hole. I bet you there's more in there than just grayling. Maybe lake trout, maybe bull trout, I don't know. I don't have time though to fish it.
river valleys opened up here. It's really beautiful too. Well, we are nearing where the main white water is. But on the way there, it looks like we got another rapid here. Yeah, a ledge or something there. Just gonna avoid it rather than trying to scout. Might dump if you bombed into that. Probably not. The river's picking up some steam here though. Looks like we got another one up here too. And this white water paddle. It's heavier than my other one. But you could just tell that right away it just maneuvers the boat so much more effectively. See these are the things where I can I can more or less avoid the crazy part. But I could run it, I just would have to scout first. That was fun. None of those are marks. See a moose. Bye, moose. Bye. She just kind of hung out and watched me drift by. That was cool. Well, we got this marked rapid coming up, so I better start uh, paying attention to the river. Well, this doesn't look like much, so either the rapid is more substantial when the map was made in higher water, or I'm not where I think I am. Okay, okay, there's something coming up up here. Weird rapid. It's like trying to suck you that way, which wouldn't be fun. 
Oh, it might be fun. You might dump though. coming from so I went around an island to the right because it looked like more rapids to the left and there's a big rapid where the two currents collided at the down river side of the island and right as I was hitting that rapid I smelled a strong smell of sulfur which is a telltale sign of hot springs I've done almost 20 clicks today so I'm making decent time of course the rapid turned out to be a lot easier than I thought, though there are some class threes coming up today too, but you know, that was supposed to be a class two. It was more like a class one. So I'm thinking at these levels, they won't be super time consuming. Of course, you never know. Well, I jumped out of the canoe. I'm walking back up river on what looks like an extremely well-worn game trail. how much higher the water gets through here sometimes just all along there well we've pretty much come to the end here beautiful little side hike definitely no hot springs not here anyway so who knows what i was smelling but definitely was a strong smell of sulfur some very interesting markings in the rocks here it's like a lava flowing around boulders. These here are rose hips. Not quite ready yet. Typically it wouldn't be green if it was ripe. Let's give her a taste. Not ripe, but not bad. Are these little guys again? I've seen cloud berries. I was calling them low brush Arctic raspberries, but could they be cloud berries? I've seen cloud berries before. We ate a bunch in Labrador and the, the little circles a lot bigger so maybe people call those cloud berries here i don't know they're definitely edible blueberries too mm, berries i'm a big berry guy big berry guy a little bit of a different species of blueberry the bushes grow taller why did you miss your full plane jim well, i was just picking some berries well as i'm back in my canoe looking at my map i see here on the portage trail, I remember where I crossed this creek. It was all bushed in, but this creek coming down off the mountain, there wasn't any water in it, but sometimes when the water's low, it'll be running underneath the ground or underneath rocks. I remember crossing that creek on the trail. So potentially if there was a hot spring, it would be somewhere coming out of this mountain there. And by that point it'd be underground. So if I walked up, I might have found warm uh, water coming out of there. Could also be part of the reason why there's a trail there, but it, it, probably not. It's probably just a pipe dream and I gotta get going. So I just, I wish I had thought of that being like, I, I kept looking for this creek, but I kind of imagine more something in the open and, and boulder strewn than, you know, more of a forest stream type of thing. So, and again, I didn't smell anything, but if I was going to go search again, I'd walk up that creek bed up the mountain and see if I could see any hot springs coming out of the mountain. So maybe that's for next time off to paddle this river again.
that wasn't even marked. It's marked with a contour line crossing the river there on the topographic map. That was like way more intense than the marked rapid, albeit much shorter. Beauty spot for a lunch stop. Just in this big back eddy here. Couple of cast food, you know? Good number of grayling right here in this little pool. Freaking awesome. Well, not bad little spot here. Uh, caught four fish, so no tributary, but the water's just clear enough and there's a nice big back eddy. I didn't keep any because I'm hoping I get to camp with enough time to cook up a stew and use those vegetables I've been hanging on to since the beginning of the trip before they go bad. I only have two nights left, that's crazy. So maybe on my last night, if I'm lucky, I'll have a nice big fish fry again, but I'm um, hoping to cook up a rubber boo tonight. Seagulls. To me, that's a sign that we're getting closer to a larger body of water. In this case, the Peel River, the mighty Peel. Well, we have another couple sets of marked rapids on this map. I know there's going to be some class threes in here somewhere, but my fear level, considering how the last ones were, which is pretty easy, my fear level has subsided substantially. Ooh, getting pretty tired. on or do I pull over and make a good meal which I could use and get a good night's sleep get an earlier start on the day tomorrow well that was pretty fun I definitely think this rapid needs a name and it should be rapide au golon that means rapid of the gulls or even just gull rapid appropriate name I think and it's in French just because it sounds better well it's 6 30 and I've done my 40k um, I'm coming up to this one last rapid here and I think I'm gonna run it I'm gonna go ahead and say I think this one's gonna be a solid class 3 because when I look at the map I see a marked rapid along with a contour line that crosses the river here and whenever you see a contour line crossing the river at a marked rapid usually it's something a little more interesting so coming up to it right now i'm probably going to pop out and scout this one out and then find a place to camp at its base um, i'll probably get to camp with any luck around seven o'clock so not too bad for a 40 kilometer plus long day okay well i scouted out the rapid and i'm gonna give her Oh, she looks pretty good. Some keep your nose clean But I 
can't help but smell The stench of all those evil rising up from hell My heart beats like Virginia Done spin myself in two Once I made for forgiveness All the things that Well, kind of nailed that. Now I can look for a campsite. There's two huge standing waves on the right at the top. But I missed them because my line... Like after them was a sketchy looking hole that I wanted to avoid for obvious reasons. So, but maybe if I'd been able to scout, I would have hit them for fun. This looks like a good place to call home for the night. evening wow I just got to change out of this um, was the dry suit necessary for today no but you never know like if it was a cold day out it would have been a lot nicer but with this warm weather your odds on getting hypothermia are way less because as soon as you get out of the water even if you've been in for a long time you warm up ideally I wouldn't have left 40k for my last day um, 40k and what are definitely going to be hands down the toughest rapids of the trip um, on the Peel River a whole bunch of ledges um, and solid you know long class 3 so but I mean I guess there's good current and it's nothing that I haven't done before so I'm not too too worried plus it doesn't get dark to late if I have to push late I can uh, my float plane is coming at like nine in the morning tomorrow or something like that so it's going to be here pretty early What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a tripod so that I can uh, hang my pot. I just cut this from a, a branch of a spruce tree um, and this is what I'm going to hang my pot from. First of all I'm just going to cut a little notch there and I'm just gonna very tightly tie off to that well we are gonna cook up a rubber boo stew that's why I set up this tripod I'm gonna put a fire at its base and use this to hang my pot over it. Rubba boo is actually a mix of two languages. Um, a roux is a thickening agent in French, um, a thickening agent that you add to a soup. And a boo is uh, an Algonquian word for soup or stew. Um, so this is why we're gonna make a rubber boo and the key ingredient to this is pemmican I make pemmican myself at home It's basically a mixture of animal fat and dried powderized meat and sometimes dried powderized berries But I also have a few other ingredients including some fresh vegetables. This is day a 10 <laughs> I'm gonna add some vegetables uh, root vegetables. So onions uh, potatoes and carrots I usually keep pretty well and first I'm gonna get a fire going and I'm gonna start cooking and should really hit the spot because I'm feeling pretty hungry. Another thing you might come in contact with when you're in the bush is wild mushrooms. I'm gonna add uh, some canned mushrooms. This is the main ingredient here. This is homemade pemmican, beef broth, and this is the concentrated stuff. You could just use water, like river stock, 
but this is great to have. There is another ingredient. Guess what it is? If you guess bacon, you're right. It's gonna take a bit more time just to let it boil and simmer down though. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to hold myself together because I'm really hungry. That is ready. That is a lot of food. <laughs> mm. That is delicious. Nailed it. The Voyagers would be proud. It was uh, really, really hot this evening and then it cooled right off, but it takes a little while to cook this, but it's worth it. Tomorrow is gonna be my last day on the river. It's gonna be a full day though because I have to go 40 kilometers and deal with the most challenging rapid of the trip by far. Well, I think I'm gonna just sit here and eat this for probably another half an hour at least. I think I'm gonna try to pack all of it in. I need a good meal. It's a big day tomorrow, so good night. And uh, hopefully the weather stays amazing for tomorrow and for my float plane pickup. I wouldn't wanna get weathered in, so fingers crossed. Good morning. It is my last full day of my trip. I have to make it a solid 40 kilometers. I think about 43 kilometers today to my float plane pickup location. I'll be meeting my float plane tomorrow morning at like 8.30 or 9 a.m. I gotta make it through the most challenging rapids of the entire trip um, on the Peel River and I gotta get there before too, too late. Oh yeah, ah, warm, warm. just a mere tap. I have no idea why those rocks look completely intact, but are just dissected with many, many cracks. Maybe there is land here and a flood came through in the spring and put moisture in them and then it, they froze over winter and the water never got back up that high. But if you look along the shore here, there's just large swaths of this river where obviously there was a flood maybe two springs ago and the ice breakup just demolished everything along shore. It looks like it was like a, a cut slash almost because um, the power of the ice being pushed by the current and flood conditions just knocked every tree down a ways from the river and all there is is just bent in half and snapped off trees now. I'm loading the boat is trying to get as much weight forward as I could so when the food barrel is heavier I put it closer to the bow now that this is heavier than the food barrel I put this closer to the bow I mean that's because when I'm sitting in the back I'm quite heavy I'm sitting closer to the stern when I'm sitting closer to the stern it means that I'm not trimmed evenly the bow sticks up a bit ideally 
the best way to be trimmed is perfectly evenly. I still won't be trimmed evenly, but a lot closer to it. Got a couple rapids to start the day off. One, two. Then I head back into a long section of braided river. And then after that, it's only about four clicks till I'm on the peel. Alrighty, all ready to get going. So I'm gonna push off, not too hot out yet. Looks like we have another beautiful day. Talk about a crazy stretch of weather. With any luck, you'll see me pulling up just before Canyon Creek today, probably late this evening, where I will await my float plane pickup tomorrow morning. So wish me luck. Got some obstacles in front of me today. Got a long way to paddle, but I should be able to do it. Here we go. done it yet I have probably about 30k to go on the heart what a sick river just all those crazy ridges with the rock spires I believe that's called castellated ridges where you see those sharp triangles and spires up on the mountains it's a sign that uh, glaciers might not have touched this area for a very long time the fact that all those aren't just carved down and smoothed down looks pretty easy but the mark rapid is after this little island not before it so this isn't really my concern curling wave that cuts my back there. I was trying to just go close to it. Probably just should have bombed it. <laughs> Hi seagulls. How much further to the peel would you say? Thanks for nothing. Okay, what did I do? Looks like a pretty big draw. Oh yeah. Oh, she's a big one. She's a big one. because they started getting a, a spasm in the bottom of my foot. Which tells me that I'm not drinking enough water. When you have to um, treat your water, it's easy to just like try to ration it. Oh, I don't want to drink anymore now, I'll wait. And just don't do that. Put my life jacket on, I've got a bit of a ledge here. Oh, I'm gonna miss it. Some of the rock formations and just the way the lines of strata are twisted and pushed up. Definitely sedimentary rock here we're seeing and, and that's because this whole area was once at the bottom of a shallow sea and these mountains around us have been growing for two billion years. Pretty amazing. Definitely different than at home where you see the big hills are all solid granite, igneous and metamorphic quartz and stuff like that which are even older in, in where I'm from in Ontario and wherever the Canadian Shield sort of spreads to way up and then over into northern Saskatchewan and into uh, Minnesota and stuff like that um, into Quebec that massive Canadian Shield area has some of the oldest exposed bedrock in the world and those hills we don't have mountains in Ontario but you get up to you know the North Shore Lake Superior or even um, around Killarney and you have stuff that resembles mountains but they're so ancient they're so old 
Those hills in the Canadian Shield once rivaled the Himalayan mountains in height. Just making my way on a long stretch of what should be relatively easy river. The current isn't exactly ripping, but it's not slack either. So I think with any luck, I should be able to do it today as long as those rapids aren't too challenging. I'm in these braids here and I have no idea which way to go. Last thing I want to do is end up on some tiny little braid that meanders through the dense bush way off the river. Hopefully something will reveal itself to me shortly. That was quite a whirlpool there. Wouldn't have dumped me, but it would have probably spun me around. Flipping my maps over. This is the last map of the adventure. Almost off of the heart and onto the peel. Crazy. It's heart to leave it behind. <laughs> oh, hilarious. And there it is. I see the Peel River. In about 100 meters, I can say I paddled the heart. Now the most challenging whitewater test of the whole trip is about to hit me, but still, wow. Noticeably bigger than the Heart River. Got some uh, clouds moving in. Looks like some weather might be moving in. There's the heart. Bye-bye, heart. It's just cool to think I can just float this river all the way to Fort McPherson and the Dempster Highway and then continue to the Mackenzie and the Arctic Ocean at Tuktoyuktuk, so. Pretty amazing, long, long journey. Maybe one for another time, but still got many. Let's see how far I got. Five, 10, 15. We're not out of here quite yet, 15K. I'm on the Peel River. I just did the heart. I just paddled the heart river, ladies and germs. The Peel River, it's huge. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was a Billy O'Teo. When it blew hard, her bow deck down, Billy by my Billy boy go. Soon may the wellerman come, who will bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take a leave and go. Other people. Another camp. I wonder if they're stopped for the day already. Probably are. Coming up to what looks like a little white water here. Maybe not much, but I'm just on my toes a little because I do have a couple serious rapids coming up. Yeah, this looks like a ledge. Probably could just run it anywhere. It looks like over there, there's a lot of boiling water, like a hole. This is definitely not the marked rapid yet though. Yeah, I wouldn't want to hit that. Well, here's the first set of rapids. And uh, it looks like there could be a big ledge there. Maybe I better pull over and scout. I, it doesn't look too bad, but just to be safe, it does look like there's a big ledge and there might be a good place to hit it and a bad place to hit it.
Well, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna take uh, what is a pretty easy line on my side, but then at the end things get a little interesting and I can't get down there to scout it without scaling this cliff. So at that point I may run into some reactionary movements, but up here I'm gonna just run these two ledges on the tongue close to me. It should be pretty easy, so here we go. That was where the real wild ride was. I missed all those huge standing waves. I could have rode that wave train and not hit any rocks though. Interesting rapid though, so wide and just one ledge after the other, just the bedrock ledges is what it's pouring over. Another rapid just down river, and then after that I think will be the doozy. So a little more whitewater terror to come. Just saw another cow moose. It saw me before I saw it, and when I looked up at it, I just had the sense something was staring at me. And when I looked up at it, it was just staring like this. Didn't look too healthy though, unfortunately. It looked kind of skinny, but uh, yeah, pretty neat. Well, it is getting on in the evening, and uh, Starting to feel it, starting to feel a little tired. It's another hot day, but I am on this gravel bar trekking down to scout the last rapid of this adventure. After I get past this, I am three kilometers from my float plane pickup location. Um, and it's looking like it's gonna be something pretty interesting, but so far it looks runnable. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna eddy out there. I'm gonna try to hit this on the far right. That's some weird current in there. Try not to get too squirrely. Then turn right and try to avoid I try to avoid that at the end. But then look, down river we have more. So we got some tricky currents in here. Doesn't look like an easy rapid at all. Some boiling current and then down river there's more white water. I'm gonna give it a go though. Here I thought I was gonna get away with the trip with no terror. And I'm faced with a really tricky rapid with huge waves, pinning boulder down at the end, really intense, crazy currents, uh, and just absolutely terrifying. And literally, my end site is only three kilometers away on the other side of this thing. So this trip is going to give me a really good test before it lets me out of here. And it's getting late too. Um, I ate some food. I'm going to strap my dry suit on and I'm going to run this thing. Dry suit. Dumping on this 
would be extremely unbeneficial for my health and general well-being. Hopefully by the end you'll see me cheering with the right side of the canoe facing up. Here we go, baby. basically avoid everything but there's some stuff that if I hit not a chance here's the next one coming up it looks intense too holy Eddie out check this one out too that's what I just ran well it got stormy here's the next drop I'm not gonna lie from here it looks harder than the last one well I'm gonna go scout this one out it goes to the left and then it bends back to the right so there might be more around the corner but i think after this i'm home free it's just that this one looks potentially crazier than the last one i'm just hoping there's some sort of like sneak route or something where i can bypass the crazy stuff that'll dump me it looks like i could come along here and avoid all that crazy stuff to the right of it and once I'm past that, it looks like I'm home free. Looks like maybe I can avoid all the crazy stuff by saying just right of it. But there's some stuff in there that if I hit, guaranteed dump. I could line down the first ledge and then run it. But even that's tricky. You could probably line down there and then run it. This was once base of an ancient sea just want to check what's around the corner in case I dump I should be aware of how terrified I need to be to get my boat to shore through here and all the way up to there the big part I am thoroughly mortified. I'm basically running a line. It's like walking on the edge of a cliff. If I don't hit that line and I go too far left, I fall off into the huge holes and dump for sure. The hard part's gonna be finding where to line it up at the beginning.
That was one of the biggest wave trains I've ever run. Holy that was a class four. Woo! Almost got stuck on that standing wave. I'm gonna line it down a bit because uh, it's uh, a cliff here. Woo! What a way to finish off the trip, running the biggest wave train I've ever run, I think. Anyways, class four fucking wave train, baby. Woo! A lot of water. Not that much though, considering. Well, three clicks left. I'm just going to pull over and punch in my exact pickup location so I don't overshoot it here. Maybe take a couple of casts. What did I want to eat for dinner on my last day in the Yukon? Arctic grayling, please and thank you. Whoa, this peregrine falcon is dive bombing me. I think the uh, peregrine falcon nest must be on these cliffs here and they're not too happy about me paddling along beside so they're dive bombing me and yelling at me to beat it. That means beat it in peregrine falcon. Don't worry buddy, I'm not gonna eat your babies. Not today anyways, moo hoo -ha -ha. Well that is my pickup location, that gravel bar right there. Canyon Creek West they call it. This is the last campsite of the trip. It doesn't seem too glamorous, but they can get a plane in here, it's deep enough and land it on shore. Not the best campsite, but I'll make do. Oh, the air smells amazing. It's about 8.30 right now. I'm gonna cook a fish and I don't care, stay up pretty late and enjoy my last night in the Yukon. Pull the spray deck off, and get it ready to go on the float plane tomorrow. When I ran that massive rapid today, the first one was intense, more technical. I just basically managed to avoid everything. But the second one was crazy and I hit my line a little bit too far to the left, but I don't know. I, I could have maybe hit it further right, but I think really also what happened there was just that the line that I chose was just way bigger. I knew that I'd have at least one huge standing wave at the end and that's I think what I hit. So I, I don't really think I, if I, I think if I had gone further left and hit like that huge hole I guaranteed would have dumped. So I think I hit my line almost on, could have been a little further right, but that it was just way bigger than I'd anticipated. I mean, I put my dry suit on. Also, I knew that there's no pinning boulders and the river got pretty relaxed after that. There was no flushing current. And uh, if I dumped, I would have, been okay and likely not have lost my boat plus on top of that I was only three kilometers from my pickup location and I could have walked worse come to worst spent a night out here with, with you know my survival kit items I would have been fine oh it just feels nice not having to worry about it getting late and having to get up early like I have to get up early but I don't have to do anything to take down the tent and board a float plane piece of cake not much of a campsite here. This is not a spot I'd think to pull over and uh, make camp.
These are just like dead dry roots. Little sticks that were floating in the current and at high water got stuck to these. Let that burn down a little bit. Flaky, juicy. Mm. Oh my god, it's cooked perfect. Well, this really hits the spot. celebrating another adventure finished. Tomorrow the float plane is gonna be here probably between 9 and 9.30, I would guess. They're apparently leaving Mayo at eight. It's a pretty long flight. Perfect, that is a lot of food. And we have real maple syrup that Tori and I made from the maple sap that we tapped on the maple trees right on our property. It was a good little celebratory meal for what ended up being an epic last day of the trip and have just an absolutely wild ride. By far the most intense rap of the, of the trip. And I will say, as far as just a straight wave train or just a massive standing wave that's and like curling at the top, I don't think I've ever hit anything quite that insane in my entire canoeing career. I'm not out of here yet. Sometimes you can get weathered in, so fingers crossed, but I have completed the canoeing portion of my journey and I might add without one portage. That's pretty cool. I can't say that about most trips. So I'm gonna call it a night and I'll see you tomorrow morning. We're gonna go for a little float plane ride. Well, it seems like it's another absolutely beautiful day here in the Yukon. It's looking like it's probably gonna be good weather for my float plane pickup though. I see some kind of sketchy looking clouds here, but I don't know. I think that they'd fly in this. Depends on how it is near Mayo though.
Well, I am just waiting for my float plane pickup. And now that I finished the Heart River and I just sat down to take a moment to have a coffee this morning, I just started thinking about the trip in general. Everything that it was, it wasn't an intense, terrifying rapids around every corner kind of trip, but it was still spirited. I mean, especially up higher, there's tight turns, sweepers, and then the challenge of uh, getting into Elliott Creek and realizing that the water there was not high and having to drag and drag and drag and drag some more and then that fear of okay well what if the water levels dropping day by day and only gets worse and now that these rapids I can wade through or drag over these rocks if the current just disappears into the rocks at that point what am I gonna do I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to portage uh, endlessly for days and days on end that would have taken me probably 12 days just to do that and uh, moving down the heart having just epic uh, mountain scenery amazing spires just freestanding spires dotting the sides of the cliffs and climbing mount nitro finding the remains of some sort of you know uh old building that is very very old and spending some more time higher up river hiking leaving myself with over 80k to do on my last two days and the most challenging rapids of the trip um, made things feel a little pressed but i'm glad i took that time to hike and spend my time in the more mountainous regions when i did and then on my last day just running what was one of the most intense rapids the first one was challenging but i managed to avoid everything i remember being in it like wow these waves these holes look massive have i misjudged this am i getting myself into trouble here and i nailed it then the second one running a line that was just completely insane i came in i, I lined up too far right it's very hard to tell where you're lining up i lined up too far right almost went into the hole had to steer go this way and turn back this way but unfortunately I hit my line pretty close to be honest with you but no matter where I hit it I was going to be hitting a massive at least one massive standing wave and I hit it a bit further to the left and it just took me on a wild ride through the craziest wave train one wave I went down the waves completely covered me like this the wave was boiling at the top and I went way up like this and I almost got stuck on that wave. It was so steep and big and I just had to paddle, paddle, paddle hard and push myself up and over that wave. It was just incredible. Took in a lot of water, but not too much that I couldn't steer and eddy out and bail. So that was like phenomenally exciting experience. I was not expecting to get into any rapids that intense on this trip, let alone what is likely the most powerful, intense wave train I've ever run in my life before. Just an amazing, amazing experience and uh, one that I'll take with me for the rest of my life, that's for sure. To the Yukon. And there is my ride out of here. There's my ride out of here! It's all working! Okay, here we go! 